I have something fairly controversial to say about the audio visual industry. But first, I have to show you this. I got my wife to shoot all the sexy cutaway footage for this projector, and I don't think I have ever heard her make this noise. What? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> that is cool. <laughs> wow. When I heard my wife get excited, about technology, I was more surprised than Dennis Nedry was by the Dilophosaurus from Jurassic Park. <laughs> it was Tyra Banks. <laughs> this projector is not just pretty. It's the world's first ever Dolby Vision 4K long throw projector. This technology did not exist in projectors until very recently, but the fact that it's pretty is actually more important than you might realize. As I walked in the front door, the first thing Nisha did was run up to me and said, it's gorgeous. It's literally gorgeous. She, she was doing a sexy dance. It's, uh, it's, it's not something she normally does for technology, but she's right. If your issue with projectors was that your wife would think it would look ugly in the living room, well then, this is the final nail in your TV's coffin. Ah, ah, he said it! He said it! That's not the controversial thing. We'll get to that in a minute. But first, thanks to XGMe for sponsoring today's video and for sending me their Horizon Ultra, as well as being possibly the most attractive projector I have ever seen. It's also the most motorized. The motorization doesn't end there though. This thing also has motorized optical zoom. And if you don't know what that means, it's actually really important. If you hang your projector in say the middle of your living room and then you look at the screen and go, oh, the picture doesn't fill the screen. Most projectors will have something called digital zoom. And this will allow you to either scale the picture up or down to fit your screen using digitization. But this introduces digital artifacts. This thing is actually using optical zoom. You don't get this on most projectors. And this allows you to scale the picture to fit your projector screen without using digitization, which is a big deal. Because the automatic keystone is so good, you don't have to mount it to the ceiling either. You can kind of stick it to the side of the room. You can almost hoik it anywhere. <laughs> That's nuts. This means that getting a square picture is easier than turning Anakin Skywalker to the dark side. Which is very easy. Do you ever hear the tragedy of Darth? I'm totally in. Let's do this. I don't. I don't even care. You want me to murder my wife or kill some children? I don't. I don't give a. <laughs> not sure. Hoiking is an actual word. But either way, this is the best automatic keystone correction I have seen on any projector. And when you couple this with the automatic protective cover and the two 12 watt Harman Kardon built in speakers, the intelligent obstacle avoidance system and intelligent wall color adaptation, you're looking at the most hoikable projector on the market. On gaming mode, you'll get sub 18 milliseconds of latency at 4K and at 60 Hertz, which is really good. And with a throw distance of 1.25 to one, you'll get a 100 inch picture if you place the projector a little over 10 feet away, with a maximum image size of 200 inches. That's right, America. I used both Imperial and Metric in one sentence. How many centimeters are even in a freedom unit? If you're enjoying this video, I do this every Saturday at 10 a.m. There is always some sort of technological review, often, and in fact, usually, smart home gadgets, which is always fun. Why don't you hit that subscribe button and ding the bell and give this video a thumbs up. That's what us YouTubers say, isn't it? That's what we tell people to do. If you do that, you'd be doing me a big favor. It tells YouTube that it's a good video and more people should see it. On with the show. And now for the terribly controversial thing in a new segment that I'm calling Do TV Manufacturers <laughs> in the Woods? Working title. 
You'll forgive me if the quality of this is a little bit low. It's because I'm out on my daily walk and I just had this thought pop into my head and I thought, I need to get this out of my face hole like right now. You know, when we were kids, none of us went to the showcase cinemas and thought the contrast ratio isn't good enough. I want to go to the UCI. Did your friends ever say, I don't want to go to Showcase, I want to go to UCI because they have a better lumen output and a better contrast ratio? And the answer is no. We all went to the cinema because we wanted to see it big. We wanted to see the biggest possible image we could possibly see. And I was thinking, what is it that changed? Because I've always been interested in more detail, like 4K is important, I'm looking forward to 8K projectors, but I've never been that bothered about the contrast ratio or the lumens as long as they're enough. They, they have to be enough that when I first turn the projector on, I don't go, that's weird, it doesn't look bright enough. As long as that doesn't happen, I don't really care what the lumen output is, scientifically speaking. And so I got to thinking like, why did we suddenly start to focus so strongly on those two things in our home life? And the answer is, same as it ever was. And it's because basically, manufacturers want you to argue about these things because they want you to be convinced that last year's TV is now worthless because it's a hundred nits lower than the new TV, which has a thousand million nits. Buy the new Philips Ambilight TV. It's got 600 nits. Your old Philips Ambilight TV only has 598. Philips. Your old TV is a big pile of sweaty garbage. And the reality is, unless you have these projectors side by side with one another, you would never know the difference. And I guess this brings me on to my next point. The point is, if you can't tell the difference, why are we so bothered? Now, I'm not saying those factors don't matter at all. I think I should probably reiterate that because there's almost certainly someone angry in my comments that I dared to go outside of what the industry wants me to talk about. I um, but if you are interested in those things, Rob from The Hookup does an incredible video, not only on this projector and goes into the absolute minutia of things like lumens and contrast ratio, but other projectors too. So if you're interested in that, I shall link that in the description. All I'm saying is that there are other factors to consider, such as, will my wife let me put this in the living room? What? <laughs> Um, can I put it in a corner of a room instead of drilling it to the ceiling and still get a really good 4K image? And finally, can I project this just onto a white wall or even a slightly purpley wall and still get a good picture despite the fact I don't have a decent projector screen? Whether you have a good screen or not, this is actually a really good projector. Let me tell you why. So why am I telling you all this? The reason is that if you watch Rob's video, scientifically speaking, this projector doesn't do as well as its competition for lumens and contrast ratio. But if you eyeball it for yourself, you honestly wouldn't know the difference. This was my reaction when I first turned it on. <laughs> I don't think it's like, it's magic every time. It's the same with smart home stuff. Every time I turn something on with my voice, I feel like an actual magician. And every time I see a projector that is this bright, I'm just like, I've, I've honestly been mesmerized by it. I haven't done any work this morning. I've been too busy watching that. I didn't for one second look at it and go, hmm, the black levels don't look black enough. And neither will you. You will see it and you'll go, wow, that's amazing. I think this was an important point to make because I think we've gone a little bit over the edge when it comes to stats. Unless something is drastically terrible, you're not going to know. More importantly though, this still runs fine for casual viewing, even in a room with a fair amount of ambient light. I've discussed before how TVs struggle with glare just as much as projectors struggle with bleaching, and you're going to close your curtains to settle down to watch a movie anyway. But depending on the location of the projector, you can easily watch casual TV with the curtains open because this projector is almost as bright as Mark Zuckerberg's forehead. He's totally a human. Definitely not the android data from Star Trek. He's the... he's um... he's not a person. <laughs> Compared to its predecessor, the Horizon Pro, I think detail is handled very marginally better, and colours look more pleasing to me personally, and apparently it's been measured as being 27% brighter. The most obvious upgrades are in physical appearance, keystone correction, 
and pretty awesomely, the projector's ability to see the colour of a wall and adjust its settings automatically to give you the best picture. The XGME Horizon Ultra has the biggest power brick I have ever seen. It has one advantage, that if a burglar tried to rip your projector out of the ceiling, the power brick would come down and bludgeon them to death. Hello darkness, my old friend. I think the cable is long enough that you'll find somewhere to tuck the brick away, but it's worth bearing that in mind. Although the optical zoom is entirely lossless, if you have the projector at an angle and you use the automatic keystone correction, there is some, and it's very slight, loss of quality. I can't even see it unless I get really close to the screen to take a look, but uh, perhaps that's just my age. <laughs> and finally, the XGME Horizon Ultra has built-in Android 11 which is amazing because it means that you can use the remote control to invoke the Google Assistant by speaking to the microphone like you're William Shatner trying to contact the Enterprise. And the remote's amazing, by the way. And you can do everything except Netflix. Because once again, Netflix have decided that, oh, we'll, we'll certify all our friends' stuff, but we won't certify all the really good stuff on the mo Why not? Why, Netflix, have you not certified this? I think, I think, let me just think about what it might be. It could be something to do with... It's infuriating! It probably won't matter to you because if you're like me, you probably use a Fire Stick or an Nvidia Shield anyway. And this can be plugged into one of the two 2.1 HDMI inputs, one of which I should point out has eOC if you plan to use a soundbar, and there is also an optical output for a surround sound system too. Every week, someone in the comments will tell me that not every piece of technology I review could possibly be game-changing, but the reality is, I'm very choosy about what I actually feature on the channel, and this is another game-changer. The fan noise is practically non-existent. It has automatic eye protection, a really nice Bluetooth remote, dual-band Wi-Fi 6, Chromecast, Dolby Vision, and support for 3D using active shutter glasses. For a full-blown home cinema, I would still recommend an ultra-short-throw projector, but if you're just a normal person with a living room and a wife that won't let you do that, then this is it. This is seriously the nicest projector I have seen so far that you can just pick up and plonk and do whatever it is you want. The picture is jaw-dropping, the sound is exceptionally good for something this size, and it's absolutely stunning to look at, and jam-packed with technology for a reasonable price tag. And if you normally suffer with the rainbow effect when it comes to DLP projectors, this has a reputation on the market now as being one of the best for actually avoiding that problem. If you want to get one, as usual, there are links in the description as to where you can pick one up. In the meantime, these incredible people running up your screen are my patrons from Patreon. And without them, you wouldn't be watching me. I'd be doing something else for a living. If you want to be one of those incredible people, you can do that at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal. And either way, I'll genuinely love you forever. These are my Facebooks and my X's and my Instagrams and my TikToks too. I'm also doing the whole thread thing now. Come and hang out there or keep your best friends. See you next time. I think this has one advantage, that if a burglar tried to yank this thing out of your ceiling, the power brick would come down and cripple him for life. Which, uh, I mean, so it has that advantage. Um, Jesus, I went dark. <laughs>